Hey guys, welcome to Wrestling Days and welcome to today's Unseen video. Not the biggest Unseen in the world because yesterday's was absolutely huge. So uh, thankfully I think we've got through quite a bit of stuff. But um, obviously we've got the fallout of NXT. We've got uh, a, an announcement for SummerSlam. There's, there's still quite a bit going on. So let's start working through it. This uh, Maurice, thank you. Shout out to you. Said, look who's trying to hide. Uh, CM Punk was at NXT uh, today. Apparently, he still goes and gets, like, checked over to see how his recovery is going. But not only that, he just loves checking in with NXT. Uh, he's been there quite a bit. He likes to pop in with his uh, free time. And honestly, I could see him being a trainer there in the future or even maybe getting Sean's role. Um, he just seems to really enjoy being around that younger talent and kind of sharing his knowledge. And yeah, there he is. Look, just watching the show and passing on a few pointers. Uh, I think there's quite a few there that he's got a lot of time for, you know, and um, I think he just finds it really rewarding. So yeah, cool. Brilliant to see him there and uh, hopefully uh, passing on a few pointers after the show. This is pretty fun. Let's play this unseen footage. This is Lash Legend after that kiss. So uh, this is backstage. And, uh, she's all flustered. Hey. Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? Yes. I'm good. good. I'm okay. I'm okay. What was that? Oh, what was that? Because the people are on here. Your face trap must be on too tight because what were you thinking? Uh-huh. Hey, it's click mm -hmm. before trick. Hey, 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 hey. Okay. Listen, listen, listen. Yes. It's bros before. Whoa! Oh! Can't do that one. I never speak to you. Let's check it out. Get the lollipop. Okay. Okay. Lash, finish the sentence. Metaphor. Mm -hmm. Above it all. Yes, yeah. above it all. Okay. Thank you. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah. do the yep. thing, do the yep. thing. We forgive you, okay? Back to normal. Made it! There we go. So it says here, look, safe to say metaphor are a little rattled after that end to NXT. This was Carmelo's uh, reaction, right? So I don't quite get it, to be honest. But uh, that was his reaction to that uh, segment that went down. He doesn't seem phased. That's what that says to me. He doesn't seem bothered by uh, what went down. Uh, Ivy Nile said she's here for it. Uh, obviously, that moment, that kiss between Lash Legend and Trick Williams, who apparently are a real-life couple... But, um, and it was mentioned during the live stream, apparently they've got together, like, earlier this year. So, I had no idea about this, right? I really do not go prying into the wrestlers' personal lives. So, yeah, I had absolutely no idea. So, this kind of came out of nowhere. I think it will have caught a lot of people by surprise. Uh, obviously, Oberfemi, look, Ivar taking notice of... Uh, the pure dominance of Oberfemi. So that's interesting. Certainly Megan Morant saw, saw it as well. There's a lot of looking going on at the moment. <laughs> Ivar's looking at Oberfemi. Uh, Megan Morant's looking at this whole situation. So I uh, thought that was fun. Megan also said, I'm here for Trick and Lash. Um, Gigi said, for those wondering, yes. It hurts. Uh, so you might remember that their match, Gigi and Ariana Grace's match, ended with a double disqualification as they both sort of low-blowed each other. And uh, here's Gigi just confirming that, uh, yes, it hurts. Trick Williams said, Lash, call me. Look at this. This was after NXT as well. Lash, call me. Um, Andre Chase said, welcome back to Thea Hale. Obviously, she uh, made her feelings very known towards JC Jane and um, said that she is back. Izzy Dane just pointing out someone pull up the stat sheet. Kizzy, which is Kiana and Izzy, uh, remains undefeated. Apparently, since Izzy joined up with Kiana, they have not been beaten. So uh, apparently still undefeated. It is what it is. Thea Hale says Thea Hale is back. Naughty word. And then uh, Nathan Frazier certainly likes that. And I believe he was 
in a relationship with Thea Hale. I don't, I'm guessing this would kind of indicate he still is. Um, because this is a, a slightly strange segment for him to react to. But um, makes a bit more sense when you know that he's in a relationship with Thea Hale. Or at least he was last time someone told me, as I said, I don't really pay too much attention to their personal lives. Uh, we got this moment backstage and Dijak says, Destiny. So uh, it looks like these two are on a collision course. Uh, Lexis King said, Rockabye baby on the treetops. Night, night, Mr. Stone, as uh, he gets carried away by Von Wagner following his match with Lexis King. Roxanne says, you're welcome. Tuesday night rocks. Excellent promo from Roxanne Perez. She did a fantastic job on NXT. I, I really think, well, for me, definitely, we're seeing the best version of Roxanne right now. I, I, I'm feeling more engaged with her than I have ever before. So uh, really uh, thought she did a great job here. Uh, Oberfemi is telling Brooks Jensen he is too small whilst he's got him in a headlock, uh, apparently, according to Fightful. And also WrestleTalk just pointing out that he was wearing Brooks Jensen an Ole Anderson shirt. Uh, obviously, Ole Anderson uh, sadly passing away recently. This was kind of fun. JC Jane uh, put in this picture out saying having a wonderful day off because they told Thea that they couldn't be her partner or JC said she couldn't be her partner because she had plans and she was busy. So during NXT, she actually tweeted this out saying having a wonderful day off. But, of course, she was actually at NXT. And um, during that tag match, uh, she would come walking out so that Thea knew that she was actually available. And she just didn't want to be her partner. Then, uh, look at this. Uh, so, I don't want to be anything like you. That's what Thea said when she stood up for herself afterwards. And uh, JC simply responds, cringe. Uh, Lash Legend saw that uh, Trick said, call me with lo more looking. And there's a lot of watching going on, isn't there, around uh, NXT. Uh, Oro Mensa says, damn, my back hurts as... And I was like, why? 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 And then I saw this, right? Amanda said, you flew. Look at this. Look at, look at this. This is amazing. This is amazing. So here, look, over the top. Look at that. <laughs> look at how he spins in the air. It's amazing, isn't it? I never saw this. He gets, I just thought he got chucked over and he just went to the outside. He sort of like rotates in the air and everything. I'm going to show it again. Here we go. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> it's like, it's like a helicopter crash into the ground, isn't he? Go again. Look at this. <laughs> Wild. Uh, this is Noam Dar reacting to Trip Williams and uh, Lash Legend. Dijak says, uh, okay, look, look at this. So Logan said, unpopular opinion. This Dijak ratio shiz ain't funny no more. Go back to telling people they effing suck and praising young wrestlers. So Dijak said, popular opinion. <laughs> Shut up. You suck. I would like to see more of Carmen Petrovich and Tavian Heights. Now eat this massive ratio. <laughs> <laughs> he's so good uh, and then ariana grace said yesterday afternoon was well spent i raised five thousand dollars washing cars for charity thanks to all those who supported ps watch nxt tonight so i'm still none the wiser about this do you remember she was picking up litter and she was saying like you should do it it's really rewarding now she's off doing like charity car washes and I don't think she washed any cars. I'm starting to think all of this is just part of her gimmick. And maybe it'll be revealed she actually never did any of these things. Perhaps like NXT Anonymous is going to show that she's just been doing this for hype. And actually she never washes cars. She never picked up litter. You know, maybe like we could get like a payoff 
along those lines. That would be good. So, um, plus also $5,000. Uh, someone mentioned that she only washed like 30 cars. So, I mean, like, it's an expensive car wash, isn't it? I mean, in all fairness, you know, you'd probably pay that. But I'm just saying. Uh, there we go. Uh, so, right, WWE, let's uh, work our way through this. Christian says they all want to be me. Koji Ko, shout out to you. So this is in reaction, obviously, to what Candice LeRae did. Obviously, a lot of people comparing her comments to Christian's comments. Uh, right. Oh, God, this has been a big talking point. So um, on Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, there are movements to bring Brock Lesnar back to WWE. Right? Now, I said to people that tagged me in this or a few people like, have you actually listened to the audio? Like, do we know exactly what was said? Because obviously there's people now going, oh, my God, Brock's on his way back. Brock's coming back. And it's like, well, have you listened to the audio? Do we know what else there is? The truth is, there is pretty much nothing else than what is written here, right? So Brian Alvarez says there have been movements to bring Brock Lesnar back to WWE. Join us after the break and we'll kind of go and touch into it a bit more. When you come back from the break, he says that there's been inquiries into bringing Brock back. And so we'll have to see what comes of that. I mean, there is very, very little to no detail about what's actually going on. Like, I don't know who's inquired about this to who or when or what they're trying to achieve. Or, like, are they just getting information? Or are they got a plan in mind? Is it Triple H? Is it someone lower down the pecking order? Like, I, I don't know. I just don't know what's going on here. No one does. So, obviously, there's a lot going on behind the scenes. Obviously, we know there's a whole thing going on with Vince, Janelle Grant, all of that situation, yeah? All of those allegations that Brock is caught up in. And we don't know what's happening with Brock in regards to those. Um, but, yeah, th honestly, there's not much I can add to this. The only thing I can say is that this is seemingly a completely separate situation from the one we've been talking about so apparently this has got nothing to do with him being removed and added back on the website because the current belief is he was never removed in the first place so this just seems to be coincidental that actually now we do have a bit of information that they there is some movements there have been some inquiries but really, there's nothing more than that at the moment. So that's where we are with the Brock stuff. I get a lot of people asking me about the Brock stuff. The 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 roster stuff online, all of that stuff over that you've seen for the past few days, seemingly a load of rubbish. Seemingly, there was nothing to that, right? Or certainly at the moment, that's what it uh, seems. And then yesterday, um, this news broke. And again, there's nothing more to it than this. So we're still sort of not really uh, uh, any the wiser. So, you know, I know a lot of people will be like, oh, my God, does this mean he's going to be at WrestleMania and all that kind of stuff? I, I, I would think not, to be honest. But, you know, we just don't know what's happening. We don't know what's happening. That's the truth. So we'll see what comes of it. Grayson Waller said, when Theory offers to shout dinner, so here he is at Outback Steakhouse. And to be honest, I've been to Outback Steakhouse. It's lovely. So I I would not be looking that glum. I really wouldn't. Like, that's, you know, we're not sponsored by him, but it's a decent meal. I would, I would have no complaints. Uh, Zoe Star, I just included in this because I thought this was good. Stark reality is I'm always great. And I, I was thinking, wow, Stark reality, I don't, believe that's the name of one of her moves but it should be the stark reality i really like it i really like it so this was a fan of hers just saying you, you're doing brilliant you know you was great on raw and she said the stark reality is i'm always great love that 
Uh, right, Triple H said that WWE have got big plans in store for this year's SummerSlam. And of course, I think we've got it later. Uh, it was announced it was going to be in Cleveland. So that was a big announcement that was made on Impulsive. You might remember we mentioned there was going to be some news from Logan on Impulsive. That's what it was, that um, uh, SummerSlam will be taking place in Cleveland. That's actually where Logan's from as well. So I'm sure he's going to get a big, juicy match uh, for when he uh, goes to Cleveland. I'm sure he's going to want to go bigger, you know. I wonder if uh, they'll put him inside something like a Hell in a Cell. Because I feel like he's done a lot of, like, jumping off kind of, like, you know, the ring post to the outside. Um, I feel like, and obviously he was inside Elimination Chamber, so there was a few things he could do in there. I wonder if they'll put him in a Hell in a Cell match. That's what I'm currently thinking. Because he can climb up the cell and jump off the top of the cell, can't he? And, you know, I think he'll want to go big for Cleveland. It's where he's from. So I'm guessing all his friends and all his family and everyone will be able to attend. So, hmm, we'll see. Sports Keeda said, is Liv going to have to settle for nothing more than a seat in the audience? So uh, Becky Lynch said, after tonight, Liv can watch me beat Mummy at WrestleMania. So the reason I included this is because if Becky's going to have that sort of tone where she's going to belittle Liv, then I think there's a chance that Liv's going to get into the title match. You know, after tonight, Liv can watch me beat Mommy at WrestleMania. Seems a bit arrogant, that, for a face. Seems a bit arrogant. And um, I think that it builds a bit of sympathy for Liv. And you could totally understand them adding Liv to that title match if this sort of vibe continues. So definitely something worth keeping an eye on. Uh, Alex, thank you. So Pro Wrestling Finesse said it seems it seems i mean i don't know quite what that means but it seems like the plan was always for gunther to retain the ic title at wrestlemania they most likely want it they most likely <laughs> yeah you have to point out these things because you wouldn't believe the amount of people that will tell me this is absolute fact gunther's gunther's definitely winning because they want him to defend about at the european shows i will have people telling me that but um if this is where it's coming from let's look at the words it seems like the plan was always for gunther to retain they most likely want him to defend it at all the european shows i, I don't i included this because I mean, what I would say is that I think we were meant to do Brock versus Gunther. And I really don't think Brock was going to win that because he doesn't need the Intercontinental Championship. And it doesn't really serve much purpose him beating Gunther. It's a much bigger deal if Gunther beats Brock at this stage in their careers. So for me, I think Gunther would have won that. I think he would have won. And it would have been huge. Absolutely huge. And then... Um, yeah, he could go on to uh, defend on those European shows. Uh, to be honest, though, I don't know if he's allowed to go to France. I know that he will be able to go to Germany, but because of his visa, I don't know that he's allowed to go to France. He has to stay in the US for like six months, doesn't he? And the, the French one is the Backlash show, which is the one following WrestleMania. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure about that bit. But, um, yeah, him him retaining, I agree with that. Uh, and this is Chad Gable. It goes on five minutes. I've jotted it down. He says, um, uh, coming up short, it, it seems to be the story of my career, letting people down. You know, it's a real personal thing. This is a personal thing. Uh, and it goes pretty deep. He says, I'm not interested. The, the, he got asked by Kathy what Sammy said after. Um, and will he reveal it? And he said, no, I'm not going to reveal what was said. But he says, to be honest, I wasn't really interested in what he was saying. I was just interested in getting out of that ring. Um, he says, like, it's hard to say when the tide of the match changed, but he knows that Sammy didn't really out wrestle him. It was just, you know, he managed to find a way of securing the pin at the end. He basically found a way to win. He said, I'm not going to make excuses. He was the better person. 
He says, like, his family depend on him and he, he's like a foundation, is a rock for them. But, you know, he will go back just that little bit more wobbly at the moment and he doesn't like that. It's good. It's a good interview, to be honest. Uh, it goes five minutes and, um, yeah, it was good. I got quite a bit from it, so definitely worth a watch. Right, let's go to GG. This is pretty fun, man. I think you're going to like this. So uh, here we go. Ariana Grace said, The pride I feel knowing I am about to change the life of Gigi by making her into a true lady totally takes all the pain of being punched in my flower. <laughs> her flower. <laughs> Just a reminder, these two, double disqualification because of low blows they both low blowed each other right gg says you go to hell this was the face look at her eyes she's like got cross-eyed and everything gg said at least i'll have this memory of the time i turned your roast beef into a smash burger good night and i was like roast beef what does she mean by this like uh, what and so I did Google it. And this is what I found. It says, for, I love how it says, hey, you asked. I, I think anything that starts with that, you know you're in for a treat. Hey, you asked. I, it's bas this article is basically saying, whatever we're about to discuss, you need to remember you asked me for this, right? I think it's from dictionary.com. Like, I feel like I'm getting a warning from dictionary.com. Hey, you asked, yeah? You don't ever, don't you ever forget this fact. You asked. The term likens the lips of the vagina, the labia majora, when elongated or stretched in some way. Like, why are we stretching it? <laughs> Like why? Why are we do why why are we doing that? Why are we doing that, guys? Why are we stretching it? Uh it says to fleshy foldy drapery. Foldy draper drape when I think of drapes, I think of like curtains and stuff like that. I don't think of lady gardens. So, uh, fleshy, foldy drapery, like slices of roast beef. And so, of course, of course, roast beef curtains is a common form of this slang in the U.S. So, it's, it, I don't know why they didn't just say it's U.S. slang. Why did we have to go through all this stretching and f f drapes and elongated slices of roast beef? I don't know why we had to go through all of that. But, um, hey, you asked. Yeah, we did get warned. In all fairness, we did get warned. And, you know, I think when you read that and you understand, like, a little better, I think this face makes so much more sense now. Doesn't it? It makes so much... Uh, what she must be going through in this moment. Unimaginable. Uh, we've got... <laughs> Look at <laughs> it's brilliant, isn't it? GG Dolan just got disqualified for using a low blow against Ariana Grace. Ariana had just done the same to GG, but the ref didn't see it. Then GG did it right back in front of the ref. I'm pretty sure they both got disqualified, uh, to be honest. But um, oh, who cares? Look at some of these. That that top right face. Look at that facial expression. I don't think I've ever encountered anything that's resulted in me giving that facial expression. It, that she is having all the emotions at, at the same time. <laughs> My word. <laughs> it's brilliant, isn't it? It's brilliant. I said I thought you'd enjoy that. Right, uh, oh, we did that one. And here, look, LA Knight. So LA Knight's instant response to being asked about Kevin Nash's criticisms. Who the hell is that? So that's how he responded to uh, someone asking him about what you think about Kevin Nash's criticisms of you. He was like, who's, who's Kevin Nash? <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> right, uh, we've done that folder. We've done NXT. We did NXT, didn't we? We did. We've done. We've done. Just this one now. A few bits in here. So, Brady, thank you. This from WrestleMania. WrestleMania 26 is the oldest mania where every single competitor on the main card is still alive today. Isn't that amazing? You can only go back to WrestleMania 26. That's only, what, 14 years ago? If you go back before that, every WrestleMania before that, at least one person on the card has now passed away. Crazy, isn't it? Uh, casual LA Night Enjoyer, thank you. So WrestleOps said, Brian Danielson states that when he was part of WWE Creative, Vince called him one night and said, what is AEW doing? that we're not doing. So apparently he said that at South by Southwest. Now, I have seen someone with another quote of Daniel Bryan talking about how much he loves lying and um, the bigger the lie, the better. And if he can get away with the lie, that's even better. Like, I've seen people sharing that quote as well. So I don't know if he's done a little bit of that here or whether there genuinely was a phone call where Vince called up Daniel Bryan and asked him what are AEW doing that we're not doing. He does go on to say that he watched like eight weeks worth of uh, of shows in one night and then created a list for Vince, which if this is true is absolutely fascinating. I just don't know if he's telling the truth or not. I don't know if he's telling the truth, but n no one should be surprised that WWE watch and analyze AEW. Of course they do. Uh, and they should. They need to know what their competitors are doing um, because, you know, there could be some innovations there that they can take inspiration from or there might be some really good kind of uh, stuff that's happening. So, yeah, they need to be aware as to what's working. I mean, data is so important that you can actually watch your competitors trying things and taking risks, and then you can see the ratings and see how it worked, and like you can be getting free information, basically, which to WWE is gold. So they're definitely keeping an eye. So this could be true. It could be true. Uh, Brady, thanks. Uh, I know someone else that's from Ohio that would be perfect to return at SummerSlam, Alexa Bliss. And we know that she's got that jacket that's being worked on. So could definitely could be. She may be back before, to be honest. But uh, it, if she is back, then I'd feel pretty good she'll have a match there. Be uh, a bit strange for her to not have a match if she's from there. Crispy Wrestling said Mercedes Monet has arrived in Boston ahead of her AEW debut. So there we go, a picture of Boston. As uh, obviously we're expecting her to be at big business later on. Uh, Robert F. Kennedy, who apparently is running as an independent in the presidential race, is considering Jesse Ventura and Aaron Rodgers to be his running mates. It's interesting. Aaron said, wow, thinking about it even more, this really won't look good, will it? So there's the picture. Obviously, we've seen this before. But amazingly, even though we've seen this image before, this is from real Mick Foley. Real Mick Foley has took this image and said, please don't. Very simple from Mick Foley. Please don't. Please don't do this. And actually, um, even Logan has spoken about this, saying about the backlash, about how diehard uh, wrestling fans have really kind of kicked back about this. Uh, it's really interesting. I don't know if we've got his comments. Have we got his comments? We might have his comments later on. Uh, oh, we've got... There we go. Logan has responded to the fan backlash over the newly announced WWE Prime sponsorship. So basically what he says is that he goes into detail saying that they approached him about doing it. He saw an opportunity um, to like sponsor on the mat. Uh, they knew that it would be a way to build up some heel heat for him. If it wasn't Prime, he knows it would just be someone else. And uh, he says he really believes that fans will just get used to it. And uh, honestly, the more he spoke, the more I thought, uh, I hate it even more now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I was like, him trying to justify and sell this to me is is making me hate this even more right now. 
So um, I am really trying. I know I'm not doing well, but I am really trying to not keep banging on, on about this. I'm really trying because I, I really, really hate it. I really hate it. Um, and I am pleased that the other diehards out there are, are hating it as well. But um, I, it's, it's, what can you do? No, you, we're not going to change it. They, you know, there's money involved. And uh, one thing these company loves uh, is money. But even Mick Foley is like, please don't. Please don't. And it looks trash. That looks trash. That is trash. <sighs> Rant over. Right, let's uh, have a look at this, shall we? This, this sh Oh, we need to whoosh it. Oh, whoosh it. This is good. So Chan Man uh, with a really good thread here. So this is wrestlers that paid homage to other wrestlers. So here is CM Punk paying homage to the Macho Man. That's good, that is. That might be my favorite. I love that ring gear. Uh, CM Punk paying homage to Bret Hart. I feel like he pays homage to Bret Hart like every day of his life. Uh, he's always wearing Bret Hart tops and whatever. So there he is with uh, some uh, pink and uh, like, I don't know if he's got hearts on at all. I think they're more stars to be honest, but you can see like the black and the black and whatever. So yeah, cool. That was uh, Beth Phoenix and Bull Nakano. She was uh, doing the face paints. Very, very cool. Uh, Gun Club paying homage to Shawn Michaels. I don't remember this. I don't know if this was from the indie scene, but Pete Dunn paying homage to Vader. So his says Vader time. Pete Dunn says bruiser weight. I, I mean, I, I don't think I've ever seen this. I don't think I've ever seen this. It does not ring a bell at all. But, uh, yeah, very cool. Uh, Johnny Gagano paying homage to Shawn Michaels. So, love that. That's really, really cool. Uh, Sasha paying homage to Eddie Guerrero. Remember that. Beth Phoenix paying homage to Luna Vachon, which is great. FTR paying homage to the Hart Foundation. Rhea Ripley paying homage to China. Completely missed this one. I completely missed this one. This one, for whatever reason, did not stand out to me, did not jump out to me. I did not ever notice that she'd paid homage to China. So, yeah, crazy. Uh, Liv Morgan paying homage to Trish Stratus. Yeah, I can see that. Rey Mysterio paying homage to the Great Muta. Yeah, this is his current mask as well. Um, this is the current, like, design on his mask. Uh, Santos Escobar paying homage to Eddie Guerrero. Uh, Santos Escobar paying homage to Rey Mysterio. There, that's great, that one. That's really great. Uh, Swerve paying homage to Bray Wyatt with the trousers. Uh, Seth... Paying homage to Rob Van Dam. One of a kind. I don't remember that at all. I don't remember that, him wearing that. But uh, it looks great. Becky paying homage to Scott Hall. CM Punk paying homage to Sting. And Sting paying homage to CM Punk. Uh, Tommy Dreamer paying homage to Terry Funk. <laughs> oh, man. Big E. As Akeem. Look at that. That's when he dressed up as Akeem. Yeah. Cody Stardust with the polka dots. Paying homage to Dusty. It's good, isn't it? It's really good, that. I thought that was brilliant. So shout out to uh, Chan Man. Takes a lot of work to pull all that kind of stuff together. So uh, a really, really great follow on social media. I really recommend you uh, drop them a follow. <laughs> um, Ali Catch said a gorilla would beat up a bear when a wrestling fan asked her what would win. And then apparently the wrestling fan turned around and had stats to show why she was incorrect. <laughs> Imagine that. Um, excuse me. Um, I, I do enjoy your wrestling, but I've just got a quick question. Uh, who do you think would win out of a fight between a bear and a gorilla? Oh, um, I don't know. Um, oh, I wasn't expecting that. Um, oh, um, 
Uh, gorilla? Uh, no, actually. I think you'll find here, uh, if you have a... I've got a pamphlet for you. Uh, if you turn to page one, you'll see in the stats... <laughs> <laughs> in my mind that's exactly how the uh interaction went so i wish that was filmed so that i could know how accurate i was but um i love that <laughs> i love that it's brilliant i i want to try that as well ask a random question and then if they give you the wrong answer have all the stats to back up why they were wrong brilliant uh, right, Rob Van Dam said he would be open to making some WWE appearances in 2024. That from Wrestling World CC. Ratings are in. SmackDown did 2.439. Big. That's a good number. Healthy number. But you, you would expect it considering it had Rock, Roman, Seth, Cody. So uh, we stacked it. Uh, Bully Ray said she would have been 101 today. Happy heavenly birthday to a woman I will love and respect forever, Mae Young. That's lovely, isn't it? That's lovely. Look at this. Look at this picture here. That on the far left is Austin Theory. I don't know when from, but um, that is an amazing before and after. I mean, to be honest, even the picture on the left, I would take that as my after. But um, that's his before and after. Austin Theory said 2011, which I know is 13 years ago. But Austin Theory has been jacked for years anyway. So it shows that if you really put that work in for a good few years, you're really going to get somewhere. He said 2011, I started going to the gym with my mom. <laughs> with his mom. Loser. Uh, I learned from her and continued on my own. <laughs> Got pointers from his mom. Uh, I remember several times being laughed at at the gym. Good, you deserve it. I remember skipping parties and hangouts just so my focus would never shake. My dream was too big to let anyone or anything get in the way. Some would say I've made it now, but I'm just getting started. Uh, all day, Austin Theory live. Sportskeeda said reportedly there'll be one more Hall of Fame induction this year. It's interesting, isn't it? I, it's got to be Bray, right? Yeah, everyone knows my feelings on this. Uh, Bray should absolutely go in the Hall of Fame. If it's not this year, I, w I won't cry about it, right? I would just expect it to be next year. But um, it's got to be. I reckon they've saved this big one till last like the big bombshell's going to drop and it's going to be Bray and it's going to be emotional and I'm expecting Bray. Yeah, we spoke about that. Um, oh, yeah, look at this from WWE Shop. And don't forget, you can get to WWE Shop by using the links in the description. Uh, so celebrate WrestleMania 40 with this limited edition golden championship. I don't know if this is the one that Snoop's got. I can't, I don't know. I mean, I don't think so because it looks like the title strap says WrestleMania printed on it. And I don't know that Snoops does that. And I think some of the colors here are a little bit different as well. Obviously, the gold's the same, but uh, that color, I don't know what the color is. It's like a green sort of color. Um, that is probably, I'm, try, I'm really trying to picture Snoop's belt. Uh, and this one does feel just a little different. Uh, but it looks great. You know, if you're someone that's going to go to WrestleMania and you want a little momentum, a little memento, uh, this would be a pretty good one if you've got the money. Um, yeah. You know, WrestleMania for a lot of people is a once in a lifetime thing. This would be a once in a lifetime sort of purchase and uh, it'd be a lovely way to kind of remember going to WrestleMania with this all gold championship. It's nice, isn't it? It's really nice. I don't know how much it is. Probably like a billion. Uh, John Cena said that 50 is his absolute line in the sand. I would like to try and do it before, but at 50, I'm just going to tweet out, peace out, see you. That's it. I'm good. So that's what he's going to put out when he's 50. Uh, and that'll be it. He's done. And he said that on the Kelly Clarkson show. 
I mean, fun fact, I think he's 53 now, so I don't know quite what that means. But uh, no, I'm joking. Actually, I don't know how old he is. I don't know how old he is. I feel like I should Google search that live right now so that we know how long uh, we've got left of John Cena. John Cena is 46. John Cena is 46. So um, I believe he turns 47 this year. So uh, basically three more years of John Cena. Uh, right, and then I think this is our last one. So botched eye surgery said there's a significant difference in the number of, number of title defenses Roman has had compared to his peers. It is true. I mean, if you look, Bruno, 681. Bob Backlund, 920. What a beast. Um, Hogan, 468. And Roman Reigns, 54. I, I have seen i mean like there is some truth to this i have seen people saying yeah but it's about quality not quantity and i i very much agree but the only thing i would also say is that that's a lot of house shows that's a lot of people that these other champs have performed in front of and entertained you know they've you know 920 matches bob backland's had in front of people at house shows where they can see the champion, right? The, there has to be something to that, right? The fact that you buy a ticket, go to a house show, and you can see the champ defend his t title, whereas you can't with Roman. He doesn't do house shows. So his title defenses are the TV title defenses, you know? So his are going to be more important than the vast majority of these types. These are just going to be a load of house show ones. I do agree. But there is still value in house show title defenses. That's still thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people that have seen these defend their belts live that have not been able to do that for Roman. So uh, there is still value in you know the the quantity but it is true the quality is more important i agree with that but um yeah you know I, I, it's it's not really a shock is it i think the biggest criticism of roman is that he should have defended the belt more um definitely i think we went from uh wrestlemania to SummerSlam without him actually defending the belt last year i, I don't think he defended it between those two major pay-per-views so for me he definitely has gone pretty long periods of time without defending the title so um but that's not news is it really we've known we've known this so but i just think looking at these numbers it's quite striking it's quite striking what a beast the, the, my big takeaway was what a beast bob backland is in 2135 days he defended the belt 920 odd times i mean that's like once every other day sort of you know, it's like, it's it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. It's crazy. I mean, if you think, like, once every other day would be, what, 1,840. Um, and he did 2,135. Whereas if that was every other day, it would be 108. But he's had the title 1,288. I mean, the difference is absolutely mind-blowing. It's absolutely mind blowing the difference between Bob Backlund and Roman in every way, in literally every sense. It's mind blowing. So, yeah, I uh, it, it is really really interesting, really really interesting. And um, but you know I've seen both sides of the argument coming out and arguing their case. So, and that's it. Uh, we could sit and chat about wrestling uh, for hours and hours and hours, but uh, I'm going to leave it there for tonight. Uh, a massive thank you for all your support with this series. And don't forget, you are absolutely welcome to get in touch with me, but there's just no guarantee that anything that you send will make it into Unseen anymore. Um, we just had people obviously saying, like, you know, can we just turn it down a little bit? Because they were getting tagged by so many people, uh, my name, so that, um, like, you know, the, the the posts would get into these videos. So, um, yeah, we've just kind of turned that down, but we're still uh, going ahead with these Unseen videos, and I'll have more for you uh, tomorrow. And uh, as the week unfolds, as we head towards SmackDown, 
which should be another big SmackDown because The Rock is going to be on the show once again. Thanks a lot for watching. I appreciate the support as always, and I will see you again next time. Bye for now.